Prayer Circle, where broken hearts meet the healing hands of God. Prayer Circle starts now. Now, now, now. Welcome tonight to Prayer Circle, and thank you for tuning in. As you while away the evening, as you reflect on how the day has been, I pray that this hour shall be a time of inspiration, and I'm grateful that you take time to tune in, whether on radio or on TV or online. This hour, let it be a time that God speaks his peace, his grace, his favor, his wisdom, and you also benefit from the testimonies and praying along with a faith community. My name is Peter, and as always, it's a joy to start with you, and I pray that you join me as we pray, as we give thanks for tonight. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for tonight. Thank you, it's the 29th day of August. You've brought us this far, and we don't take it for granted. Thank you for keeping us through this month as it's just about to wrap up. Thank you for keeping us eight months of the year. And very soon we'll be saying goodbye to 2024, not too long from now. And we pray that as we transition at that time to 2025, we look back at this year and say, Lord, thank you. I changed, I developed, I grew, I got deeper in you, I got to know you better through the experiences, the high times and the hard times. So we open up to you, Lord. Let tonight be a growth opportunity, a learning opportunity, a time to thank God for his favor and goodness, a time to fellowship with one another. We commit it to you with gratitude and say, Lord, speak to our hearts because we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This week, remember our topic has been change begins with me. That's right. And I would like to ask you, what do you see your testimony? What will your story be December 31st, 2024? What will you look back and say, I've grown in this area? Yes, indeed. This week we've been talking about change begins with me. And I would like to implore you and ask you, let your reflection at the end of this year on December 31st, as you look back into the year, may there be tangible milestones of transformation in your life. And let them move from just being wishes to being progress that you achieved. Change begins with me. I encourage us, in any area you're desiring progress, take responsibility for it. Tonight we are talking about an interesting topic, advance through adversity. Yes, the changes we desire, the changes we want to effect are coming on the platter of adversity. Don't escape or pray away your storms, your obstacles, your adversity. Those are platforms for lasting change. Let's not yet get into that. We'll get that into that shortly. So don't be afraid of adversity. I don't know what you're going through right now. Maybe you're going through a storm. The Lord is saying, don't you dare give up. Don't you dare fear. I will carry you. How does he carry us? Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'm excited when I talk about adversity because some of the greatest strides I've made in my life are through those adversities and through the storms. It says in Deuteronomy 32, it says, verse 11, as an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings, so the Lord alone did lead him. Just like an eagle, and we are told how an eagle carries her young on her wings, training them, teaching them how to fly. After they've been, they are used to being fed. I was watching a little clip on online about a bird that was behaving the way it used to be when it was young. You know, when it's young, it opens its mouth and the mother comes and throws a worm inside. So this time it's old, it's bigger, it's big body, and it's chasing a worm on the ground. And then it's opening its mouth, waiting for the worm to step in. Excuse me, no worm is stepping into your mouth. Some of us need to realize times have changed. The way God used to provide for you 
in those earlier years where you just say, oh God, things are so hard. And there, Ting Ting M-Pesa confirmed 1,000 shillings. You say, hey God, I knew you love me. <laughs> things have changed. When was the last M-Pesa that came after such a prayer? Or you just say, oh God, I don't know what I'll do this month. And somebody just steps in and says, my brother, I was just thinking about you. What need do you have? And I say, my rent, three months. Okay, what's the number? Now you're realizing he's providing differently. It's no longer opening your mouth and the worm falls inside. What he did for them, he now carried them on eagle's wings. And we are told the eagle carries the, child, the little one, the egret, high and drops them off the wings. And as they flutter and they are going to the ground, she comes and comes beneath them and raises them up again. And that happens once, twice. And finally, the eagle stretches, the eaglet stretches her wings and begins to learn to use her wings. Advance through adversity. Some of us are bitter with God because the way he provided for you when you got born again and you needed bus fare, and you're just saying, Lord, you know, I love you. I'm just from a prayer meeting. And as you're stepping out, you step on a hundred shillings note. They say, ah, God, I knew you love me. Now the last time you stepped on a 10 shilling is even about five years ago. You're wondering why aren't people dropping some money? <laughs> Hallelujah. No one is going to drop a hundred shillings anymore. And if you're still waiting for them to drop, how many people need to drop enough money for you to build the house that God said he wants you to build? It's not going to come by confirmed M-Pesa. It's not going to come by I remembered you. It's not going to come by picking it up. Lord, develop my capacities. Let me rise up as an eagle against the storm. You know the story of the eagle? Other birds run away from the storm. They hide in the trees. But the eagle actually looks for the storms. Because they, she says, mm, this is my holiday. It's my time to, for my glory to come forth. And she smells and senses the direction of the wind, stretches out her wings, and jumps into the powerful up, upward current. And the current surges upwards and causes the eagle to soar and she rides and she's one of the fastest birds of in the air because she's riding on the powerful currents of the storm i want us to pray tonight what is the storm you've been running from and blaming god for forgetting you why am i going through this lord People we graduated with, they are having managerial jobs. And here I am, Nikajuakali too. And you're despising yourself what you're doing now. You think it's a temporal thing while you wait for the God of all blessing to take you where you belong. And you, you feel humiliated to have to do what you're doing. Let me tell you, our attitude has got to change. Father, as I do this Kibarua, it's no longer Kibarua. It is me expressing the glory in this. It may be a, a so-called small kaduka, small kiosk. It's you that is calling it that. But it's time for you to say this is the beginning of a network, of a chain of supply, of impact. Stop despising the day of small beginnings. So tonight our first prayer is, Lord, help me to embrace the adversity as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. That obstacle is an opportunity. It's wrapped inside the obstacle. It's an open door, if only you can see it that way. I don't know what you're going through. And I'm, I'm praying, and my dear friends, each one of you, Faith in Umoja, Betty in Westy, what are the adversities right now that seem to stand against your advance, advancement? Joy in Kitengela as usual, and Stephen in Utawala, thank you. I just want to speak, allow me to speak into your lives tonight. Des in Lari and Kibet in Nyeri, Maggie in Nakuru, each one of you, what's your story? Take inventory. What are the storms, the winds that seem to be saying you will not go forward? Rather than pray against them, 
What capacities can you develop to advance spiritually, mentally, financially, socially, and in your personal growth? Hallelujah. Text me and let me know what is that that you can turn around. I told you there's honey in the rock. Let me get to that. Evelyn Mirenja and Ashley and Milia Odwar and Mama J. I hope you're paying attention. Eunice and Pastor John Baraka, listen to this. It says, God carried them on his wings. The Lord alone did lead him. There was no foreign God among them. Then what was the result of God's training through adversity? He made him ride in the heights of the earth. When you undergo the school of God, that school, the graduation, he makes you ride on the heights that he might eat the produce of the fields. You stop being omba, omba, saidia, nikumbuke. Why aren't people remembering me? You eat the produce of that field you're in. Mm, I'm getting excited. Miriam, there's produce in that field. He made him to draw honey from the rock. When you talk about rock, I'm facing a rocky place. The marriage is on the rocks. You're talking about hard situations, adversity. God, when you allow him to train you, he makes you to draw honey, sweetness out of that adversity. Let's pray together right now and say, Lord, help me to see my adversity as an opportunity. Open my eyes. Some of our eyes are clouded with tears. God, why me? God, how long? God, why? But tonight we are wiping those tears and says, Lord, yes, it's me. It's an opportunity for the master eagle, ha, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, to train me on his wings. How you face adversity. You never give up. You never quit. You are a God of faith. You that speaks and calls those things that be not as though they were. Teach me, train me through my adversities. Lord, it's a painful situation. It's not pleasant. The debts, the shame, the embarrassment, the sickness. But through this adversity, Lord, help me to develop the capacities. Empower me through it. Teach me through it. Make me a blessed through it in the name of Jesus. I pray for each one of us. Faith as we are praying for Brian in Nyakach. And Brian, I know you're listening. May God bring beauty out of this situation. As we even pray for your healing, we are praying, Lord, the honey that I'm to draw out of this rocky situation, show it to me in the name of Jesus. Ah, yes. When you draw that honey, you become a blessing to others. And we are going to see another person that drew honey out of the predator that was to destroy him. Lord, the things that were destined to destroy me, make me a blessing through them and with them in the name of Jesus. Through the words that I will speak, through the faith experience and encounter that I have with you, I want you to pray that through this adversity, number one, you'll draw closer to God. And the treasures you will draw out of intimacy with God will make you to ride in the heights of the earth. You will be a blessing. You will be sought after because you carry treasure from the bosom of the Most High God in the time of adversity. I pray for you and I speak a blessing on you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You can tell I'm excited about this. You can advance through your adversity. We've given enough excuses about why we are where we are. But tonight we are saying no. There is treasure for me to draw in this adversity. As we are believing God for full recovery, what am I to draw through this process? Ask Dodi Austin, the mother of Joel Austin, through her sickness, terminal illness report from the doctors, giving her a couple of months to live, and that is decades ago. And on that place of coming to prepare to transition and saying, God, what have you spoken about my health? 
What is your covenant of health? Through the word, she sat with the scriptures day by day, underlining God's agenda about health. She located scriptures, meditated, starting speaking the word day by day. How many years later, how many decades later, she's alive and well. She's already in her 90s and still serving God. She drew treasure during the adversity. She could have closed shop and say, okay, God, I think I've served you enough. You've said I'm going home. I'm ready to come home. But no, I have a purpose for life. So any of us who feels you're tired of living, you're not done. You are not born to just live a couple of years and live in shame. There is a purpose to fulfill and that adversity will not stop you. Let it build you. Mm, I'm getting excited about this. Advance. He will never leave you. Don't think that he's with, with you only in the good times. Psalms 46 says, God is an ever-present help in time of trouble. That's his promise. He is with you even in the wilderness. In fact, that is where you experience him in a greater dimension. And by the way, you don't have to pray for wilderness. It will still come. You don't have to pray for adversity and say, Lord, bring adversity so that I can experience him, you more. No, you don't have to pray. It will come. The fact that you are created in God's image, the enemy takes that as an invitation permanent visa status to come and attack you. So you don't have to invite the enemy. He will come. But the beauty is that even in that wilderness, God shows up. Look at the story of Israel through the wilderness. They saw him bringing manna. They saw him bringing water out of the rock. And that's what it says concerning that Deuteronomy 32 that we read, that when he led them, he carried them on eagle's wings. He caused them to draw honey out of the rock. Let me quickly take some of the prayer requests that have already come. This one says, good evening. I have a land issue in the court. My father bought this piece of land and my uncle collaborated with rich people. They bought their way in court and our land was hived off. I managed to appeal this case and we were granted a full hearing that was in December 2017. Yet since then, nothing has happened. And now my parents are aging. I have now taken the mantle. Please pray for me. Again, pray for my daughter who has graduated and has no job. And I hear you and we want to pray. If we look, and I was just looking back, your dad got this land before, well before independence. What a privilege. What an opportunity. What did God have in mind for your family to progress and be a blessing, including you? Not now that they are aging, the case is still in court, and you, you're also not in a few years, that you have now taken on the mantle, and you also now continue battling. That is not God's agenda for us, and we want to challenge it with the word of God and say, Lord, something must change. And as I take this mantle, this battle over our destiny, over our inheritance, stops here in the name of Jesus. The payments that were made, somebody trying to corrupt justice. And we are saying no. Lamentations, those are the scriptures you stand on. Lamentations chapter 3, it says to subvert a man of his cause, to deny a man of justice, the Lord does not approve. So as you've taken the battle in court, we are taking it to a higher court, the court of courts, the judge of all the earth. And we declare now, and I want to declare right now in the name of Jesus, that the justice of God shall be served and sensed in this case. And every corruption, intimidation, and wickedness of the enemy shall be silenced in the name of Jesus. And that the blessing of the heritage, those many years ago that God freely gave to this family, 
The enemy shall not subvert it. In the name of Jesus, we release the blessing of God that makes rich and adds no sorrow. And we declare, let the works of the enemy be destroyed, rooted out, never to be continued in the other generations. Let this family experience their heritage in Jesus' name. Amen. I feel passionate about that because uh, uh, the devil is wicked. He steals our inheritance. We refuse it. Good morning, or rather good evening. I'm Kennedy from Rirota. Keep my family in prayers. My children's education in God's hands. And for God to open their minds and hearts to whatever they are taught. And as they study for academic excellence. Amen. Remember, we are praying for our children as they have now gone for their third term. Those that are in the, in the system and they are waiting for different examinations, end of year, end of season, transitioning to another season. And we are refusing the purposes of the enemy. Oh my, remember the video you're watching or the clip that you are seeing on TV? A student, they are being driven to school and all kinds of misbehavior on the roads. And if that is what we could see from the outside, what was going on on the inside? And if that is their way to school, how will they perform in school? What's their hope of studying and delivering on their dreams? And not, before, not long before that, we saw on the internet the kind of cheating, exam cheating going on in our universities. And of all courses, medical courses, my God, that's the person training to handle our heart, our kidney, our brain, our mothers on the operating table bringing new life, we refuse the enemy's attack on our systems. And we pray for these students that God, please open their eyes. Why go cheat? I mean, you better check out and get another course or something. Get something you're passionate about and parents. It's not pressure. You must be. You must be this. Maybe those are the people who kept being drummed into. You must, you must, you must. And they don't love it one bit. I pray that they find their space. Yesterday we talked about knowing yourself. Putting a phone here to be, somebody is dictating the answers. What is the question? Okay. How many mitochondria? How many mitochondria? Okay. Listen. Mm -mm. We refuse. And I pray as a student and you're watching, believe in yourself. That brain, God has given you the capacity. Advance through adversity. You don't have to cheat your way. And how many places will you cheat? You live a life of a liar. Just like Jacob, he got to the point, he said, enough is enough. I've cheated all my way. This one, I'm wrestling with the angel. The angel is not giving in. I continue. And he put his hip out of joint. And Jacob finally surrendered and said, I'm not leaving you until you bless me. Tonight, ask the Lord, Lord, enough of my queer ways, my underhanded ways, my corner corner, cheating, cheating. I'm tired of living a double life. Lord, I want to be authentic. Please help me to be authentic. A life that honors God and blesses society. That's the kind of life you want to live. Not a, just a queer life. Corner, corner. We don't know whether you're black or white. May you live right. Hmm. You can quote that. Black or white, I'd rather live right. Praise the Lord. Kindly remember in prayer, me in prayer, as our company is planning to downsize and lay off a sizable number of staff during the course of this week. Now, your company is like many this season. And I pray that each one of us right here on Prayer Circle and tuned in, maybe it's your first time, that God will begin to prepare us for the shakeups and the global shifts and changes and the local changes so that we will come out on top and not as victims, but as victors. We are talking about change begins with me. We are praying with you. And my sincere prayer for you as my fellow pilgrim on this journey is this, that God will build the capacities, the strengths, the resources, the wisdom for you to get out of this better and not bitter. 
Mm -hmm. I would like you to listen to a certain message by Dr. Miles Monroe. It will help you. It talks about overcoming seasons of crisis. And it talks about these very things, about layoffs and global recessions that we are going through and will go through. Overcoming seasons of crisis by Dr. Miles Monroe. It will bless you and it will equip you to prepare. This one says, praise the Lord, pray for me. There's pressure for high blood pressure. May God minister to you and bring healing. Another says, pray for financial and good spiritual breakthrough. I want us to pray for this need so far brought and raised and whatever relates to you. Maybe yours is some recession in business or some shifts, some changes, some mergers. Two companies are coming together and you definitely know some people will be let go. And you're saying, God, please don't let it be me, please. One of the things we are praying, let it not be me, is because nothing prepared us. No one told us. We didn't get the skills. We have no savings aside. We have no preparation. Tonight we are saying, Lord, prepare me for the famines that are ahead. God did not stop the famine in Egypt. He prepared Joseph years before the famine. I want us to join in prayer and say, Lord, prepare me for any hard times that would come ahead. Whether financial hard times, downsizing or right-sizing, they may call it, layoffs, mergers, job loss, or even just aging and growing old and preparing for retirement. We are not going to be 16 forever. As much as we say jokingly and say I'm 16, but the reality our body isn't 16 after 10 years and 20 and 30 and we cannot deliver at the same capacity as those youngers people. And even if we can, they are now looking to employ younger people at less cost. I pray, Lord, prepare me. Prepare me by your spirit. You see the future before I get there. Let it not get me by accident. Let it not surprise me. Let me be ready by your spirit. Like the eagle whose vision can see so many kilometers, over five kilometers away. Help me to see way ahead of time and be ready by your spirit like a Joseph and put together the resources, the skills, the capacities in readiness for the changes that are coming my way. The seasons of marriage, when the honeymoon love is no longer there, yet love endures. Prepare me for those seasons. When the children are growing and they are changing, prepare me for those seasons. When business is going through a heating and sicknesses, global issues are affecting it, prepare me ahead of time. By your wisdom, I embrace your spirit of wisdom tonight. Quicken my understanding. Quicken my spirit. Help me to walk with you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. That's a whole message for another time overcoming seasons of crisis. May God prepare you, even through the present challenge you may be going through, become a better person through it. We're still taking your SMSs. There are still a couple of more. What are some of the things you've learned? If you look at the things that have stuck with you, some of them have been through the toughest of times, the painful seasons. And you say, I learned. I went through it and I thank God. The book of Psalms 119, verse 67, verse 71, the psalmist says, It was good that I was afflicted, for now I keep your word. He's saying, I'm glad I went through what I went through because I've learned the value of your word. Another says, that same Psalms, 119 verse 67 and also 71. He says, before I was afflicted, I went astray. I was living carelessly. I was living an indisciplined life. 
it was just casual, you know, just let's live life. It's okay, no pressure, it's not that bad, it's not that serious. But when you go through a storm, hey, you don't talk that kind of casualness or you become a casualty. When you take life casually, you become a casualty. Adversity. Tonight we are talking about advance through your adversity. I want you to own your situation. Take responsibility for where you are. Okay, you didn't get the education you required. Your siblings got it. You didn't. How long will you give the sob story? To who? Which office is going to open because of the sobbiness of your story, so to say? None. What heights will you reach by giving in intricate details the pain and the details of the assault and the grievances that were done to you? None. That is a personal, you know, treasure or a personal scar. You know the details. But you get to a point in your private time and secret place and you say, okay, this was what was done to me. But you are not going to stop my advancement. I refuse. They didn't pay my school fees, but they don't own all resources. They don't have the monopoly of knowledge. They didn't take me through school, but life itself is a school. And if you want to know that, look at many people that are making waves right now. Many, I'm not saying all, but many have had negative experiences when it comes to schooling and education. Some did not get it. Some took themselves to school after they'd made it. Some I know are the ones who started the university. They started a university, though they did not have a university degree. There's no limitation. Some of the business magnates in this nation, especially in earlier years, we hear of them were unschooled, had a very basic education, less than primary school. But there was something, there are some capacities they chose to develop, especially through adversity. When you know you are not having a head start, hmm, you run, you run like fire. If I run, someone is asking. <laughs> Listen to this, Judges chapter 13. Chapter 14, if I was to write the heading there, I would write Samson's Rorashio. <laughs> you understand, eh? Samson, chapter 14, Judges chapter 14. Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. So he went up and told his father and mother, saying, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, Get her for me as a wife. Can I speak to a man? Sisters, you may listen in, but this is for me and brothers, my brothers. Eh? Watch what you're watching. Guard what you're looking at. This guy, Sami, Samson, just goes down to the wrong place. He's in Timna, and he says, hmm, my goodness. Hey, some people are created, oh, my dangerous she is everything i could dream of and he went back home we don't know how long it took to go home but on knocking on the door he just said dad mom i've got to have her what are you watching there was a text yesterday you're saying please i'm struggling with masturbation i'm struggling with sexual before we even go far what is that habit feeding off it's feeding on imagination. When you're busy doing the action, it is the pictures in the computer of your mind that are feeding that desire. So you need to go back. What have I been feeding my mind with? Some of us, the secret habit, pornography, it is feeding the desires, and those desires will place a demand. Samson said, I've got to get her. Listen to his response. The mother told them, 
the father and mother said, is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren? Yani there is no believer that you have to go, you must go get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines, that is people who are not in covenant with us, people who don't share the same values, who people who don't have the same God. And Samson said to his father, get her for me, for she pleases me well. There's no discussion. I've got to have it. Let me tell you, my brother, no one is with you when you're scrolling with your Infinix and your Techno and iPhone and Samsung. No one's there. But it's feeding a desire that will place pressure for fulfillment. So you're busy struggling and saying, pray for me. It's something we have been programming. And guess what, beloved? We need to do something about what we are seeing. And that's why at this point, let me allow me to digress slightly. That is why family media believe in providing holistic content all day, every day, all year round for the past 25 years. So that what you watch is going to create the right desires. Watch 700 Club and you're going to say, God who did it for her can do it for me. It builds faith. Watch and listen to the conversations, the heartfelt conversations right here. And you say what they are going through and overcame. I can also overcome. I will not give up. Listen to the music. It builds faith. The songs we have been listening to tonight saying through it all. And you say, yes, Lord, I may go through, be going through a storm. Through it all, I will trust you. 25 years providing content that builds faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And allow me to ask you from my heart, be part of the army that is taking responsibility to keep Jesus on the airwaves. Through your financial giving, through your prayers. And tonight, make a decision to send a gift. Do it as your response to God to say, God, Thank you that I'm partaking of content that builds my faith. As we pray together with Peter on air every evening and with the others, we're trusting God. This same God who has done it for others, let him do it for you. To him be the glory. It's not me. It's not anyone. It's God that cares for you. And at this time, make a decision to send a gift to be a continual partner, to increase your partnership. Praise the Lord. Let me finish this story of Sami and his Rorashio. They went down. They went to verse 5. They went to Timna with father and mother. They came to the vineyards of Timna. Now to his surprise, a young lion came roaring against him. Every time you're going to pursue something, obstacles will come. Adversity will arise. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he tore the lion apart as one would tear a young goat, though he had nothing in his hand. But he didn't tell his dad and mom. And they went, they did their oratio, they came back. After some time, when he returned to get her, now for the actual wedding, he turned to see the carcass of the lion, and there was a swarm of bees, and there was honey in the carcass of the lion. He took some of it and went along eating. I want us to pray tonight that, Lord, the particular adversity that I am facing, it didn't roar against the parents. They were all together on the same journey, but it roared against Samson. God, why me? Yes, me. Why is it not my brother didn't go through it, my sister did it? Why me? Yes, it's you. Because there is honey that needs to be delivered to your hand through your overcoming the lion. I want us to pray tonight, Lord, whatever I need to overcome the adversity, grant it to me. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Let's ask him tonight. Begin by asking him, Lord, forgive me where I've murmured. Forgive me where I've complained. Oh my, I have complained. God, how long? 
is this the way you d- reward people who serve you are you really truly god do you really care why was entire anointed is my tithe not coming we have complained enough of the complaints forgive me lord forgive me for even thinking that i'm the doer i'm not i don't i refuse to take the credit and the glory i cannot help myself i am honored and privileged to be here lord and i acknowledge my sin and ask you for forgiveness and i pray help me to see the adversities that i'm facing that they are for my advancement the lion was not to destroy me yes the enemy wanted to destroy me through this sickness through this poverty through all this marital crisis through this failure in business through this job loss through this business failure whatever it is through the libel and the case the court case the land case whatever injustice the enemy intended it for evil but may the holy spirit come mightily upon me ask him to pour out his spirit on you tonight oh yes you may not shout you may not do many things because you are wherever you are but ask the spirit of the lord to come mightily on you and who is the spirit of the lord isaiah 11 talks of him that is the spirit of counsel the spirit of might the spirit of knowledge the spirit of understanding the spirit of wisdom the spirit of the fear of the lord ask those dimensions of the spirit of the lord you have known him as the spirit of might the shakings and the vigor but ask him to also manifest as the spirit of understanding when you're in that crisis in your workplace and you want to give up you want to just quit you want to resign you want to give the boss a piece of your mind you want to let your colleagues know who's boss here but the spirit of wisdom understanding knowledge gives you a way out many times they came to jesus to trap him in his words he never fell for their traps holy spirit grant us wisdom wisdom in our situation some of us are in job situations that are precarious they are looking for us to fire us so they can make room for someone of their own and we are aware and we're not going to come and anoint their seat or speak fire and brimstone but by the same spirit who gave david understanding and he behaved himself wisely when king saul wanted to spear him and he rose give each one of us that spirit of wisdom in class grant us your wisdom as parents grant us your wisdom as ministers of the gospel grant us your wisdom favor and understanding by your spirit this is our desire so that through this adversity we will draw honey out of what came to destroy us in Jesus name amen and amen god bless you i pray that this season be open to the outpouring of the spirit of god we end it on that note may your adversity make you a distributor of blessing Samson got honey and he gave others. They didn't know where it came from. People will celebrate you. They will not know the secret place of rising through adversity. Good night. God bless you. You are more than a conqueror. Prayer Circle, where broken hearts meet the healing hands of God. Prayer Circle starts now. Now.